All right, even more problems in Florida. Of course, they can't get it done in time. They can't get anything done in time down in Florida. There's a lot of breaking news there we'll get to throughout the course of the program. Uh, the the Avenatti arrest and being charged, ha- there, there is a big issue that needs to be dealt with. I'm going to explain all of that in the course of the show today. Uh, we got a lot of chaos in the Democratic Party. Republicans are actually showing some leadership and strength with, uh, I guess, now the new minority leader to be, and that would be Kevin McCarthy. We'll get to that. Wait till you hear Kamala Harris's comment. <laughs> uh, th- th- it's it's going to blow your mind. She's basically asking, do you know the perception that ICE is the equivalent of the KKK? Um, that exchange is coming in the course of the show as well. We'll get to all of it. Let me just give you an update on Florida because it matters to every American here. You know, we, we've, we've got to get these elections right. And if one more election season is ever allowed to go by in Florida and allow Broward and Palm Beach to do what they're doing, we will never, ever going to get an accurate number already as it is. You know, we it, it is it is mind numbing. And then, of course, you got activists, judges, justices, apparently one decision made by one judge. The wife of that judge is a Nelson donor over the years. I mean, there's so much out there. But, you know, here we go again. Another judge has stepped in in the middle of this Florida fiasco with a ruling that could impact Rick Scott and the recount. Tallahassee federal judge has given voters now until Saturday to fix ballots that were tossed due to conflicting signatures, extending that extending the deadline now for counties to turn in the final election results, including machine results. Now, the judge said that state law lacks a concrete process for voters to challenge county canvassing boards that decided to reject provisional or vote by mail ballots due to signature mismatches. Now, I doubt it's ever going to come near the 12,562 vote deficit that Bill Nelson has. But this is what Marco Rubio was saying. It's like, all right, so you're down 24-22, you know, five seconds remaining. You kick the field goal. And now after the fact, the lawyers for the losing team come in and want to argue and change the rules. That you're not, that's only worth one point, not three. And this, it, 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 there is no, at the end of this, let me tell you what it means. It was win by any means necessary. When the lawyers for Gillum and Nelson went in there and said, uh, and they said that, well, that person is an illegal immigrant. Objection. They want to count that vote. Uh, we now have a report out in Politico today. Most experts say no matter how many times they recount the votes, Andrew Gillum doesn't have a prayer of ever catching Ron DeSantis. But that, you know, we'll just head right to plan B. And in this case, Politico reporting Gillum's hope rides on a series of unlikely events uh, tied to his fellow Democratic Senator Bill Nelson filed a a host of lawsuits to broaden the pool of countable ballots by overturning or changing Florida election laws and rules after the game is played. That does. These are lawmakers. They don't care about truth. And you want to talk about sore losers. All the talk in 2016, if Donald Trump loses, he's going to he's going to contest the uh, uh, the honesty and the integrity of our electoral process. Well, now it's the Democrats doing it on a spectacular scale. Also happening in the state of Georgia as well in that governor's race. But, you know, if if vote, I guess enough votes surface, uh, Gillum could still contest the election, filing a lawsuit within 10 days after the election being officially certified. That's supposed to happen November 30th. So we'll see what happens by January basically is the end here. But I got to hope by this time Republicans know what they're up against. When you go from a 57,000 vote lead down to a 12,500 vote lead, you better pick it up then. And that you just heard from the Palm Beach uh, from Palm Beach County saying they will probably miss the deadline as the judge gives voters time to fix ballots with signature issues. That's it's unbelievable. It was one report that we got that Fox News is reporting that it has learned that Karen Walker, the wife of Judge Mark Walker, who ruled in Nelson's favor this morning, has previously donated uh, money to Bill Nelson's campaigns, which would raise questions about whether or not he should have recused himself. Notice it's only Republicans that recuse himself. You know, in the case of, OK, Jeff Sessions, he had no reason to recuse himself. The reason he gave at the time was that. Well, I campaigned with Donald Trump. 
doesn't mean he can't be a fair, objective, discerning attorney general. And that Rod Rosenstein, he was way conflicted in this because he was the one that wrote the letter about James Comey and recommended the firing. And then he signed the fourth and final FISA warrant. And at that point, what else? You know, you can't be more involved. He's almost like, well, witness A in, on, on both sides of this. So now they're going to give voters more time. We don't have an exact number that they are putting out there in terms of how many people. Um, it's unknown how many discarded ballots are at stake, but it's at least 3,688, according to election officials. Lawyers for Nelson filing a motion with the Secretary of State to produce the names of all the people whose mail-in provisional ballots were thrown out. So I guess we'll find out by 1 o'clock today that same judge will be hearing that. And in a 34-page ruling that relies on a lot of football metaphors, Walker said the Secretary of State must order supervisors of elections that the state scheme as it applies it to curing mismatched signatures is unconstitutional. Consider the game of football. Football fans may quibble about the substance of the rules, but no one quibbles that the rules are necessary to play the game. And it goes on from there. So we'll find out. Doesn't look like there's going to be enough votes, but I, at this point, who can predict anything that won't be done to, to grab this election, if you will? Um, you know, also, Florida Democrats plan to use altered forms to fix mail ballots across the state de deadline. Now we're finding that little fact out. Bins filled with ballots are stacked at the Broward County Supervisor of Elections office as employees now counting ballots during the, this recount going on there. But a day after Florida's election, that was the Wednesday after the Tuesday, Top state races too close to call. Democratic Party leaders directed staffers and volunteers to share altered election forms with voters to fix signature problems on absentee ballots after the state deadline. That's another law that they've broken here. How many laws are broken before anyone ever gets held accountable? I guess it's just like Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton gets away with anything and everything every single time. So we're going to watch all of this patiently as this unfolds. Let me go to the issue, um, and we'll get calls in. We're going to take a lot of calls in the course of the program today. So Michael Avenatti has been arrested for felony domestic violence. He came out last night, and I think we have the tape, and strongly defended himself that he's never done any such thing. Here's what he said. I have never struck a woman. I never will strike a woman. I have been an advocate for women's rights my entire career, and I'm going to continue to be an advocate. I am not going to be intimidated from stopping what I am doing. I am a father to two beautiful, smart daughters. I would never disrespect them by touching a woman inappropriately or striking a woman. I am looking forward to a full investigation at which point I am confident that I will be fully exonerated. I also want to thank everyone for their support that has reached out. You know my character. You know me as a man, and I appreciate it. Well, a lot of people would say <laughs> they know your character and what he did in the case. Let me, be, let me start with this. I really don't know Michael Avenatti. I know he's the big star of of cable television, and I actually have the number of appearances in my pile here somewhere. I'll dig it out in a second. Uh, met him once for you know one minute at a some type of event where I was I don't know one of the honorees of something. I went in and out. I was wasn't there very long. You know, I look at the guy. I mean, he's a street fighter. He fights for his client. Whatever. Fine, I have no problem with that whatsoever. I just wasn't interested in what he was offering. He tried to bait me a number of times into debating. I'm just like, I've got better things to do. I've got more important issues. I was covering the deep state at the time. And uh, anyway, but putting all of that aside, this goes down. Um, and it's, it's noticeable, by the way, that when the news broke, all these channels that had put him on so often, all of those channels, uh, they weren't really covering it very much i'll give you those numbers in a second but here's the here's the crux of all of this and even democrats thought avenatti undercut their case against kavanaugh so 
On top of other allegations, Professor Ford, remember, she had claimed there was an eyewitness in the room when Brett Kavanaugh, um, you know, jumped on top of her. I don't remember the exact allegations. Eyewitness had never happened. Other people said it didn't happen. And there was so there was no corroboration. But anyway, he came out with the single most outrageous charges against Judge Kavanaugh and his client at the time who ended up changing her story was suggesting that almost like on a weekend basis that you had these young high school boys including brett kavanaugh drugging in the punch and intoxicating with other substances these young teenage girls again in high school and that the boys were lining up and this was happening regularly lining up in the halls waiting their turns to rape unconscious or drugged young teenage girls and that it happened a lot then the story changed well i didn't see him put anything in the punch bowl but i saw him give somebody a red solo cup or i saw him near the punch bowl well i didn't see him in a line uh so to say and the story changed it was so outrageous and he was so passionate that this has all gone down this has all happened here and what was missing was any sense of due process or even due diligence on his part getting to the story with his own client. And at the time, I think it was Alan Dershowitz who said, uh, this, he may have to take back this whole, you know, he may have an ethical ob obligation to withdraw the Switnik affidavit. It's now being looked at. We all know by Chuck Grassley has referred Avenatti and Swetnick for criminal investigation. So that's going forward. But here's the thing, and I'm, we'll get into this more later, is he did not provide Brett Kavanaugh the presumption of innocence of due process. Now, I'm going to say something that I'm consistent on. I don't know anything about what happened in this case with Michael Avenatti. But he, like anybody deserves due process and deserves the presumption of innocence. I'll get into this a little bit more deeply. Uh, if I can reach over here while we, uh, as the program unfolds. There are so many reasons to be a grateful nation. And in large part, we have our military and our veterans to thank for our liberties and freedom. National Wreaths Across America Day is Saturday, December 15th. You can join in the mission to remember our fallen heroes, honor those who currently serve in their families and teach younger generations the value of freedom. A $15 donation to Wreaths Across America sponsors a fresh handmade balsam wreath from Maine with a single red bow. The veterans' wreaths have become a gift of America's respect. The circular wreath with 10 balsam bouquets is a catalyst for unity, healing, and an expression of gratitude. What started with America's most hollowed ground at Arlington National Cemetery has grown to ceremonies at close to 1,500 other participating locations across the country and overseas. Sponsor a Veterans Wreath today and show your appreciation. Visit www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. That's www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. All right, as we roll along, Sean Hannity Show. I'm back to the point I was making about Michael Avenatti and these charges that have now come up against him and arrested felony domestic violence, confident he'll be exonerated, strong denial. And I, I go back and all of the people that whenever something happens that rush to judgment, in his case, the most outrageous affidavit by Julie Swetnick, he went out publicly. This had all happened. She ended up being interviewed backed off her story dramatically witnesses. She said would that would know, didn't know, never panned out. Now there's a criminal investigation or criminal referral from Chuck Grassley. You think how often this happens, Richard Jewell, Duke lacrosse. You think of Cambridge police. You think of Ferguson, Missouri. Everybody was so sure. Freddie gray it was a slam dunk. Those six cops were going to jail. It happens so often. And I'm, I'm not saying this to be personal. I'm saying this to make a very profound point. Is that Avenatti deserves due process. He deserves the presumption of innocence. In other words, he deserves that which he did not afford. And a lot of other people did not afford. And that would be Justice Kavanaugh. 
And his allegation, his client's allegation, was the most outrageous of them all. I just have to wonder if he feels differently today about it. Because he should. All right, 25 now until the top of the hour. You know, it's. I want to just say one thing. I take no glee and... In Well, just because Michael Avenatti happens to be somebody I politically disagree with. Oh, in the news. And I I just I have, I'm just not that way. And it's not personal to me in any way, shape, matter or point. It's, it's too serious a topic like when it was in the Kavanaugh hearings. Look, if you want to call in and disagree with me, Ken, uh, and what you think about Avenatti charges, what happened with the Kavanaugh hearings, feel free. The number is 800 941 Sean if you want to call us, as always. Um, but if you're just joining us, Avenatti arrested, felony domestic violence, confident he will be exonerated. You have Vermont Democrats canceled his events just based on the allegations. Um, social media just exploded on this thing. Um, we have Stormy Daniels saying, that she these are serious and obviously very troubling allegations but right now they are just allegations she's right reserve judgment until the investigation i agree wholeheartedly with her he did give a strong denial that he never hit this woman that he said he would never ever do anything like that um but by the way so did brett kavanaugh i mean the guy we saw that testimony it, this this went to his his soul and to his core. These allegations are really, really serious. And that's what was so horrible about Ted Kennedy and Robert Bork and the things that Ted Kennedy had said and all the what happened with Clarence Thomas and his forceful denial. And that and th- we heard the term high tech lynching and then Justice Kavanaugh and all of these sanctimonious, all the stories started to chip away one by one. In some cases, there were no details at all, not, no memory or allegations that, well, I have an eyewitness. And you ask the eyewitness, I don't recall any such thing ever happening. And the worst one was the affidavit, which Alan Dershowitz had said at the time, it's a pretty smart guy, that uh, Avenatti may have an ethical obligation to withdraw the the affidavit after the accuser that that Avenatti was representing, Julie Swetnick, walked back some of her explosive allegations. It's now led to Chuck Grassley now referring Michael Avenatti and Julie Swetnick for a criminal investigation. You know, there's got to be a reason that one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not bear false witness because it's devastating. Take any case, if you talk about Robert Bork, who's passed away, you're going to remember being Borked and what Ted Kennedy said. I think Clarence Thomas has been one of the finest Supreme Court justices in history. Amazingly brilliant, smart, and he's that now forever changed his life. Brett Kavanaugh, his wife, his children, this has now forever changed their lives, and Those allegate with such certainty he was making the case for a client and apparently didn't even dig down deep enough because in one interview that the client gave his client, Julie Swetnick, she walked back a lot of the main details that had been put in the affidavit. That's a problem. That's problematic. Now, I just want to add one point to this because this happens a lot. And some people say, well, Hannity, you know, why would you give him the benefit of the doubt? Because he because that. That is a core value that has served this country well. You know, you have the right to remain silent. The Miranda case. That has become a core value. You have a right to a defense. You have a right to presumption of innocence. You have a right to do and fair process. Some people, I guess it was Alec Trebek. I don't even remember this interview. I think I met him once, interviewed him once, and I remember just being friendly because I was a fan of Jeopardy said something like, yeah, I told Hannity I wasn't a full conservative and he seemed to get mad. I I don't think that ever happened. I got to pull that clip. Um, I just want fundamental fairness. When when he complained, I talked about Hillary and I said, yeah, because if you're going to talk about Russia collusion, you can't ignore the Hillary comparison. You can't. 
if you're going to talk about a, a, some a very few that literally are writing exonerations before investigations after pulling the case away from field agents themselves and having the top people in the FBI handle Hillary's case, and they're writing the exoneration in early May of 2016 and then don't interview her until July 2nd of 2016 and then exonerate her with what you've been preparing on July 5th of 2016. There's a problem And then the lead guy in that case that did the interview of Hillary, well, he's also the guy that took on the beginnings of the, quote, Trump-Russia collusion case. How do you talk about equal justice under the law if because no one else is treated that way? We know she violated the Espionage Act. There's no ambiguity at all. We know that it is the clearest case for obstruction of justice ever in history with the whole email server scandal, which... By the way, Lindsey Graham says, oh, you guys in the House, you want to do investigations? You're not going to be passing bills? Fine, we're going to go right back and we're going to start from the beginning and do what should have been done right. Hillary Clinton never should have gotten the nomination in 2016. If the law were applied to her the way it would be applied to all of you, we, the people, she would have been in huge, massive trouble, legal trouble, jeopardy. And would not have been it, and prob, and she should have been charged, because the evidence is overwhelming. It is incontrovertible, and it is it's all there for everybody to see. And then, then the whole story. We're going to talk about Russia and Donald Trump, and it looks like that is now coming to an end. We want to talk about that? How do you not talk about a phony Clinton bought and paid for dossier? We want to talk about money and financial shenanigans funneled through a law firm? to an op research firm, to a former MI6 agent, but I thought foreign nationals weren't supposed to impact our elections. Then Russian lies are produced against Trump, and then they're leaked to the American public to steal an election by influencing them with outright lies, nothing ever verified or corroborated. The same documents, bulk of the FISA application warrants were that bought and paid for unverified, uncorroborated dossier that you talk about Hillary because it's about equal justice under the law, equal applications of our of our laws. It's about do we have a two tier justice system under the law? And so it all matters. And then, of course, you know, the fraud on the FISA courts, then it's used to help circular reporting. You leak different things from the same document that Christopher Steele, the dossier he's put together and to different news organizations, they print it before the election. Why? Because they want to hurt Trump. They want to hurt him with lies and propaganda. In other words, so they can win. And then after the election to get a special counsel appointed, which happened, and again, Comey has his own legal jeopardy, as far as I'm concerned, if there's equal justice under the law. That's what matters. These things matter. And if you, if you can't compare and contrast, we're treating one group of people one way and another group of people another way. The great lesson I've learned in my career is that, and I've learned it in a, in a really deep and profound way in Atlanta. I've told this story before. I was there in 1996. The Summer Olympics came to Atlanta, Georgia. Remember, never forget counting down. They had a big clock as you drive through one of the main highways in Atlanta. You know, 1,000 days to the Olympics, 500 days, 450 days, 10 days. You know, it was actually fun. It was very cool, great for the city. They built a beautiful park. The only downside is you got a horrible backdrop of CNN headquarters. Just kidding. Um, But all of a sudden, they have the Olympic Park bombing, and this guy, Richard Jewell, who we thought was a hero, now they put in the paper that, well, he fits the profile of a lone bomber. He lives with his mother. I'm like, okay, he lives with his mother. That doesn't make him a bomber. What are you talking about? Makes no sense whatsoever. Um, anyway, I, I, to me, it was absurd. And I said it on the radio. Turns out I was the only one with that opinion at the time. It also turned out that he was listening to me at the time. And then it turned out after it was all over and he actually was the hero, he thanked me. And I went up to do Fox in 96 and he gave me one of his first interviews. Lynn Wood was his attorney at the time. Great attorney. 
And I learned a lesson. Learned a big lesson. You know, when with the Duke lacrosse case happened, all those professors at Duke, full page, you know, ads about how basically how guilty these kids were. Well, they're athletes. They were whatever. They had whatever precon, you know, prejudice, preconceived notions they had. Well, I actually took the time. I met. I I was covering the story, so I went and met with the family. I took the time. I'm oh, Hannity, you're not a reporter. You're not a journalist. He, we do journalism as talk show hosts. Yes, we do. Part of our job. We're the whole newspaper. And I looked him in the eye, and I knew something wasn't right. My gut. And so many other people rushed to judgment. Did it in the case in, remember, Trayvon Martin could look like my son. Could have been me. Barack Obama lawyer. I think he went to Harvard, didn't he? He's rushing to judgment. And I talk, I, I did my own work there too. Went, flew down to Florida for it. Interviewed George Zimmerman. Then, of course, the case in Ferguson, Missouri. And I didn't rush to judgment there either. The people that, you know, Darren Wilson's career is over. But the people in the news that were rushing to judgment and interviewing these people, yeah, they shot him in the back in cold blood and blah, blah, blah. That wasn't what happened in that case. And everyone in the media rushing to judgment. Freddie Gray, another example, rushing to judgment. Everyone thought those six cops, I said, and I, when I did my research and dug down deep on that, I said, nope, not happening. And all, just went away. Everybody wrong again. And the literally the roadkill of reputations that these people leave behind, it is despicable. There's got to be a reason God picked 10 big commandments with Moses. And one of them is don't kill, don't steal. You know, we know whatever, honor thy father and mother and love God with all your heart. They're all good. They're all right. I believe it all. I wish I was better at it. And I know what's right and wrong. I even know what I'm doing wrong when I'm doing wrong in my life. I have since I was a little kid. And then you have a reason not to bear false witness. But all these people that went after, I didn't expect to spend this much time on this. All these people that went after Judge Kavanaugh with a vengeance and with certainty and with passion. I, we have to learn the lesson. Everybody that says with that, before we even heard a word or even knew Professor Ford, so many had claimed, I'm with her, I believe her. For only political reasons, because they didn't like that Donald Trump, who won the presidency, got to make the appointment. That's all it was. It was politics. And it didn't matter what happened to Kavanaugh, his wife, his children, his family, his friends, his reputation, etc. And one of those people was Avenatti with the Julie Swetnick allegation. Now he's facing... He's been arrested on felony domestic violence, and he's confident he will be exonerated. And like I said in the Kavanaugh case, I, don't ha I wasn't there. And by the way, this isn't 36 years ago. This is in the course of one week. You know, the, the one quote, if true, if that turns out to be true, that I, when he said that, well, she struck me first, and another report we're told her face was swollen and bruised with red marks on both cheeks, according to TMZ. And they were told that the woman was on the sidewalk. I can't believe you did this to me. I'm going to get a restraining order. He pulls up five minutes later, runs in the building. Uh, she hit me first, quote, unquote. We were told he angrily added, this is BS. This is blanking BS. But Avenatti didn't give the presumption of innocence and due process didn't even really drill down on the charges that his client was making that they put in an affidavit. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Grassley's recommendation now to have a criminal referral. He's made a criminal referral for Avenatti and Julie Swedek. My point is this. I have to wonder, and there's no, there's no antipathy here, animus here. Because I, I say that Michael Avenatti deserves the presumption of innocence, that he didn't afford Brett Kavanaugh. 
he deserves due process, that he didn't do the due diligence that I think an attorney should have done with Swetnick. All the other stuff he does, all the TV does, I don't really care what he does. But these are serious charges. These are real people and real reputations. It's going to be interesting to follow. All right, we got a lot to get to. We got the caravan issues, Democratic Party infighting, which is unbelievable. We'll get to uh, all of that in the course of the program today. Uh, we also have an update on Florida when we get back. I want to remind you, though, about Liberty Safe. First of all, these are the greatest people on Earth. It's American made. They they're out in Utah, the number one safe manufacturer in the nation. I did my own research long before they were ever on this show. I'm so proud to own all of my eight Liberty safes. They are the leader in, in of the industry in technology innovation. They've got the greatest features, even military style locking bars and a heat expanding fire seal second to none. They have installation if you want it, lifetime warranty, and they make an unbeatable product. I have my little handgun safes too. It just opens with your fingerprint. It's amazing. You can protect your what? Everyone's got to protect valuables. You got to protect important papers. If you're a gun person, you got to protect your firearms. Right now, they're even offering 12 months interest free uh, financing on approved credit. It's a great time to get a safe at libertysafe.com. They're wonderful people, the best service. Every time I lose my combo, oh, hi, Mr. Hannity. We have it memorized. No, I'm kidding. Libertysafe.com, because I have forgotten it a few times. Libertysafe.com will continue. There are so many reasons to be a grateful nation, and in large part, we have our military and our veterans to thank for our liberties and freedom. National Wreaths Across America Day is Saturday, December 15th. You can join in the mission to remember our fallen heroes, honor those who currently serve and their families, and teach younger generations the value of freedom. A $15 donation to Wreaths Across America sponsors a fresh handmade balsam wreath from Maine with a single red bow. The veterans' wreaths have become a gift of America's respect. The circular wreath with 10 balsam bouquets is a catalyst for unity, healing, and an expression of gratitude. What started with America's most hallowed ground at Arlington National Cemetery has grown to ceremonies at close to 1,500 other participating locations across the country and overseas. Sponsor a Veterans Wreath today and show your appreciation. Visit www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. That's www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. All right, glad you're with us. Hour two, a lot of ground yet to cover today. The Democratic Party crack up, which is getting very entertaining. Uh, we'll give you the latest on the caravan as well coming up. We'll have more on Avenatti and all the other news of the day. I want to first go back to Florida, where a judge has now extended the recount deadline. It's pretty unbelievable. Here we go again. Another judge steps in. Right into the middle of the fiasco down in Florida in a Tallahassee uh, federal court judge gives voters now until this Saturday. That's that's how many? 14, uh, what, 12 days after the election then? 12 days after to fix ballots or or 11 days, at you know, tossed because of conflicting signatures. That just extends the deadline for the counties to turn in the final election results and. You know, we did find out that the judge in this particular case, uh, Warren is his name. It weren't massive amounts of money, but the, his wife had donated apparently to uh, Ben Nelson. You would think that that might be a little bit of a conflict in time for recusal, but I guess not. Um, his wife, Karen, donated to Ben Nelson. Not much, 250 bucks, but shows where they are politically. If it was a Republican, I guarantee you there would be a huge, massive, you know, unbelievable outrage spewed all over, you know, fake news, cable TV all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you recount the votes in the case of governor Gillum doesn't have a prayer of catching DeSantis. We went from 57,000 votes ahead for Rick Scott in Broward County, Palm beach. Uh, they come up with another, what between them, hundred thousand votes. It's ridiculous, but still Rick Scott has a, what is in terms of recounts, 12,562 massive um, amount. And of course, Palm Beach can't fix their problems and they try to do a recount. No, the machine's overheated. So that doesn't work either. Anyway, here for an update on all the latest. Uh, Brad Todd is with us, senior advisor to Rick Scott's campaign. Uh, Brad, uh, what's the latest on your end? 
Well, thanks for having me on today, Sean. Uh, you know, the machine recount in Florida is now complete. Governor Scott's lead over Bill Nelson has widened. He is ahead by 13,427 votes, give or take. Uh, it, it is now time for Senator Nelson to look at himself in the mirror and decide if he wants to be remembered about for all the things he's done in his career that he's proud of, or does he want to be remembered for something he won't be proud of? On the signature, on the ruling today by this judge, how many signature conflict ballots were thrown out? Do you know a final number? Well, well, well hold, hold let's, let's walk through exactly what it is. I know your listeners will want to uh, be aware of the, of the details. In Florida, if you vote by mail, you can't obviously show an ID by mail. So the remedy for that is you match your signature. You submit a signature on your ballot, and the election officials match it to the one they have on file from your registration. If that signature doesn't match, they notify you and give you until 5 p.m. the day before the election to come in and correct it. And so that that's the procedure. Uh, in They had to be corrected by 5 p.m. before the election. But what news reports today have uncovered is the Florida Democratic Party staff was asking voters to continue to submit those election signature corrections until Thursday after the election, after they already knew what the results were of the election. So and essentially, that's, that's in a way stuffing it. Uh, and, and, and they, had, they had, were asking voters to do that using a doctored form that misstated when the deadline was. Again, this is the news reports out of the U.S. Yeah, I just, I, by the way, I just pointed that out in the last hour. That was one thing I forgot to yeah. remind people. Yeah, that's all true. Yeah. And they, they extended, they gave a phony deadline to change the signature. Right. And I also heard that they were lobbying to get the people there. Is that true? Well, they're contacting them. They're, that's what they're, they're trying. They, they proactively were contacting them. But again, this is after they knew what was on the scoreboard. Yep. And they knew that the deadline had passed and they knew how many votes they were down. And so what we have here, you know, is a noncompliance. And, and I, I always say that noncompliance, the shadows of noncompliance is where fraud goes to hide. And so if you want to have an election that has integrity, you have to have election officials who abide by the law and abide by the regulations. And by the way, 65 counties in Florida, Sean, have had no problem. There have been problems in two of them, uh, 65 counties. And that includes have, the have, panhandle and all the counties that were impacted by Hurricane Michael. Right. That's right. And by the way, Broward County, which was really slow to get started on the recount, did finish in time today. Uh, the, but the margins in their recount, by the way, helped Senator Scott based on versus where they were on election night uh, in Broward County. But Palm Beach County is the only one that didn't complete it. But luckily, Florida's fraud protection laws their election laws have a remedy for that. They let the county revert back to the number they turned in on Saturday so that if you either complete your recount or your first number counts. Uh, so that's where we are in Palm Beach County. I just left the supervisor of elections office there. Uh, and with a 13,000 vote margin, you and I know this is not going to change. Bill Nelson knows it's not going to change the outcome of this election. So the only possible reason, well, the, the, the only other was, thing that was, but there weren't that many ballots that were mailed in no. that didn't match. That was no, the point. If, if every if every mismatch signature ballot was counted now, we the according to the, the court today, we'd be at five thousand statewide. Statewide, if every one of them, uh, and and his order today was limited to those who he says were belatedly notified of the mismatch. He didn't really define what belatedly means. And as a result, we appealed that. So you still win anyway. It does, in other words, you win under every circumstance by That's thousands right. and thousands of votes. That's right. That's right. That's correct. Um, any other issues that you're watching that uh, because, well, I mean, now that the, what, this yes, is. Yeah, go ahead. So go ahead. Yesterday, the judge in court looked at the Democrats lawyers and said, you know, I feel like you're asking me to rewrite Florida's election code here by myself. Uh, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. And you and I know why it is. They want to get rid of all the anti-fraud protections so that in 2020, they have a better chance of winning the presidential election. They want Florida to be the Wild West. They want to get rid of the anti-fraud protections the legislature has put in place here. And that's why they're filing these suits. They know it's not going to change the Senate race. You know, you know, Rush was the first person to say that. And then I heard a number of other people suggest it. And I thought more deeply about it. And it makes sense as you go on. I, it just wasn't my. Uh, are they really playing long ball, knowing that they can't win at all? 
because I sense they want to get this. I think, you, can, you know, when the judge also, when there was an objection, when he said, well, that's in the illegal immigrants ballot and the Gillum and Nelson attorneys objected. Uh, and the judge right. goes, noted. <laughs> that's all the judge said. <laughs> um, I think it tells us everything that we need to know. Now, all the laws that we know are broken. And the judge ruling in, in the first case last Friday, the Florida's Constitution was violated. Then the history of Broward and Palm Beach, that all factors into it. It, it, it does, you know, and Broward County's election uh, administration has a very, very uh, uh, spotty past. And uh, it, <laughs> to it, say the it, least, uh, <laughs> you're being quite generous. It, Go ahead. <laughs> And, you know, the reason we have these deadlines, you know, the, the first deadline that was missed was on, on election night, 30 minutes after the polls closed, every county is supposed to announce the total number of mail and absentee ballots that they have yet to tabulate. That way, everybody on both sides and the public knows the universe. They know the pool of people uh, who will decide the election, defined. And we have that statute in place. And it's the 30 minutes standard is there 30 minutes after the polls close. Yeah, they didn't do it because because that way nobody knows what the margin is. That's everybody correct. knows the pool before anybody knows the margin. Correct. And, and in Broward's case, they continued to change that pool the next day and the next day. And in Palm Beach's case, they continued to change the pool. Yeah, they got 15,000 there. I know. 80,000. Right. Last question. When, when is the when do we expect the final, final declaration that Scott is elected, certified, that Ron DeSantis certified as governor. What, what's the drop dead date? I heard it was the 30th now. It's been stretched out to. Well, next 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 Tuesday is the day that the election should be certified. Uh, there is a manual recount underway now, uh, assuming Senator Nelson does not concede and do the right thing. Uh, there is a manual recount underway. It has to be completed by Sunday. Uh, and then on Tuesday... Who the victor of that recount, which will be Governor Scott and Governor Elect DeSantis, will be certified on Tuesday. As define a uh, define hand recount. They only look at undervotes and overvotes. Now, an undervote is a ballot where the voter did not mark anyone in that race, and an overvote is a ballot where the voter marked two people in that race, which uh, inv- which makes it invalid. It makes it invalid. Correct. By the way, and if you did, and, so, and, and then by the way, if you didn't vote for somebody, and you have a mark all the way at the bottom of the page, and this was at the top of the page, they're going to be arguing that little dot there. I'm sure that was the intent. <laughs> well, you you remember the 2000 recount? Yes, I do well, very please. well. <laughs> Dimpled, pimpled, you know, uh, indented, scattered, smothered, covered. I get. But, I remember the whole thing. But we don't have to do this. Senator Nelson can do the gracious thing and concede. His lawyer has told other candidates trailing by fewer votes than this to concede. And so we just have to ask. Oh, Mark Elias has said that he said it never goes beyond a thousand votes. It's just never going to be reversed. Boy, uh, he's a he's a attorney gun for hire, right? Well, I'm sure he's going to still bill through the weekend, even if it doesn't change. Uh, I think based uh, on everything we've seen, they they don't care if they they're hoping and praying that somehow they're going to get the right judge that makes the wrong ruling and doesn't obey the laws of Florida. You know, I like Marco Rubio's analogy, which is, well, it's 24, 22 and the team that's down kicks a field goal in the last seconds of the game. And then all of a sudden you bring in Mark Elias and his team of lawyers and they want to argue, well, that field goal should only be worth one point, not three. And the loser should be the winner. That's right. That's you know. right. Uh, the game is over. The score's on the board, and 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 they're asking the league to reinterpret the rules. Uh, All right. So that that's the situation. All right. Hang on the line one second. We have one uh, question off air. I've got to ask you. Brad Todd is a uh, partner at On Message uh, Inc. and senior advisor to Rick Scott's campaign. Thank you. A lot of information. We appreciate it, and we'll have obviously more on this tonight on Hannity, uh, 9 Eastern on the Fox News Channel. Unbelievable. I mean, when you read all the... It is unbelievable. Um, By the way, Republicans are getting a backbone. I'm going to tell you about Democratic chaos in a minute. Kevin McCarthy... All right, so he won his race. Congratulations for House Minority Leader. Um, And he's making funding the wall in this lame duck session of Congress the top priority. He's introduced his Build the Wall, Enforce the Law Act. 
It provides $23.4 billion for wall construction. That's the full funding. $5.5 billion in funding available immediately. $16.6 billion dedicated to physical barriers. The rest, technology, operations, infrastructure, uh, manpower, all associated with border security. Um, the hard part is, it does, you know, how does this pass the Senate? Even with Mitch McConnell's increased majority, since McConnell refuses to just end the filibuster rule, which he should have done a long time ago. I mean, it's unbelievable the things he, they, they get away with, except for judges. He's, McConnell's been great on judges. I will say that to him. All right, 800 941 Sean, toll free telephone number. We'll have the latest on this caravan. They're expecting another 900 to 1,000 that have been able to find transportation up to the. Uh, border, the southern border. So that means we had 80 yesterday. Now maybe up to a thousand more coming in the next next day or two. We'll update you on that coming up. There are so many reasons to be a grateful nation. And in large part, we have our military and our veterans to thank for our liberties and freedom. National Wreaths Across America Day is Saturday, December 15th. You can join in the mission to remember our fallen heroes, honor those who currently serve and their families and teach younger generations the value of freedom. A $15 donation to Wreaths Across America sponsors a fresh handmade balsam wreath from Maine with a single red bow. The veterans' wreaths have become a gift of America's respect. The circular wreath with 10 balsam bouquets is a catalyst for unity, healing, and an expression of gratitude. What started with America's most hallowed ground at Arlington National Cemetery has grown to ceremonies at close to 1,500 other participating locations across the country and overseas. Sponsor a Veterans Wreath today and show your appreciation. Visit www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. That's www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. All right, let's re- as we roll along, 800 941 Sean. I promise next half hour we're going to take a lot of calls. Um, it's not a done deal for Nancy Pelosi. You have a uh, congresswoman, Marsha Fudge of Ohio, saying that she's overwhelmed by the support that many of her colleagues have for her entering the race for House Speaker. That's a big deal. Now, the Democrats going to fall in line. I mean, well, Kristen Cinema C- immediately, who said she wasn't going to vote for Chuck Schumer, meets him, falls in line within seconds, which I thought was pretty interesting. But, you know, you have all these anti Pelosi Democrats. They're now saying they want somebody else besides her. Many of them actually ran and on the platform saying that they wouldn't vote for her. One Pelosi detractor, this was in the Hill, Kathleen Rice, making the case that there are other ways to secure female leadership at the very top of the party. To those who say this is an issue of gender, that's just not true. I'm a woman. A lot of our new members are women, and they should not be made to feel that they're anti-woman If they don't vote for Nancy Pelosi, we have an enormous number of talented women in the caucus, an enormous number. uh, So in that sense, I think she's got a pretty tough, you know, I think she's got a hard time. She's saying she thinks she has it, but I'm not sure she does. And you have, you know, people I know James Clyburn has been out there. Others have been out there. Elijah Cummings and Steny Hoyer, and they're all trying to help her. But. You know, some of the moderates like Tim Ryan of Ohio and Seth Moulton of Massachusetts, moderates, meaning they're not they they had to say things in their district, but they didn't really mean the most times. But anyway, they're publicly voicing encouragement for another person to run. In this case, Marsha Fudge is supposed to run. Moulton is the leader of the resistance to Pelosi. And he said the kind of new leader that we need for this party. And Mull is now, uh, now Marsha Fudge is, is mulling a bid. Several prominent Democrats stepping forward to back Pelosi. Eric Holder now is he, he stepped in, and Bobby Rush, Maxine Waters, and Fudge is now saying she's considering it. You know, I won't give myself a hard Friday deadline, but it'll be close to that, or I'll go home for Thanksgiving and talk to my family. It's going to be interesting. All right, when we come back, a lot more ground to get to. We'll get the inside scoop on what is going on in Congress. Then we'll get to your calls uh, in the next. Then we're going to get to the caravan. A thousand more people expected as we continue. You'll hear 
what everyone really thinks in D.C. This is the Sean Hannity Show. Bottom line, Madam Leader. Okay. okay. If the election were held today on the House floor, do you have the votes to be elected Speaker? Yes. I intend to win the Speakership with Democratic votes. Uh, if that was your question. If that was your question. Uh, the the um, uh, I have overwhelming support. Uh, in my caucus uh, to be Speaker of the House. On the other hand, here uh, we have uh, are celebrating a great victory uh, for the Democratic Party, but more importantly, for the American people. Every place I go, people say, and not even go, just coming in and every means of communication, thank you for saving America. And I convey that gratitude to my colleagues, uh, to the grassroots people who are so effective in getting out that vote, and particularly uh, to our uh, to our candidates. Reverend Sharpton, thank you for saving America. Thank you. Give a hand, Nancy Pelosi. You know, I, to my Democratic friends, if you want to look backward, we're all going to look backward. Uh, I want to know why the FBI reached the conclusion, along with the Department of Justice, that uh, Hillary Clinton didn't commit a crime. Was it because of political bias? If you really wanted to stop Trump, how in the world could you indict her? Was the reason she wasn't indicted is because they wanted to make sure that uh, they stopped Trump? And how can you stop him if you indict her? Did the yeah. Department of Justice and the FBI use a uh, document paid for by the Democratic Party, uh, researched by a foreign agent, uh, to get a warrant against an American citizen uh, that was uh, inappropriate, potentially unlawful? We need a special counsel to look at all this, but I, I intend agree. to look at it. I'm going to look at it. If you're going to mm -hmm. keep plowing everything up in 2016, count me in. If you want to look forward, I'll look forward. If you want to look back, we're going to all look back. Uh, to everything and everybody, not just Trump. The president said he has no intention of firing Mueller. It yeah. looks like some agreement has been made by the reports I read between the president's lawyers and the special counsel, yeah. written answers. That would mean this is now coming to an end, at least in my mind. Well, this is a manufactured problem. President Trump is not going to fire Mueller. Mueller is going to be allowed to do his job, and we need conservative judges on the bench as many as we can, as often as we can get them. I don't know what Senator Grassley is going to do. He's been a great chairman of the committee. If I'm chairman next year, we're going to do judges, judges, and more judges. And at the end of the day, I am convinced that uh, Mr. Mueller will be allowed to do his job. I've seen not one scintilla evidence of collusion. The obstruction of justice thing never made any sense to me. You didn't fire somebody uh, who works uh, as a political appointment. Uh, the FBI director could be fired for almost any reason. And the Democrats wanted Comey fired. So mm -hmm. I feel good about everything right now. All right, that was uh, Nancy Pelosi. Oh, uh, every place I go, people thank me for saving America. <laughs> She's got to be kidding. And I have an overwhelming support to be speaker. Well, she actually doesn't have overwhelming support. We'll find out pretty soon. Uh, Lindsey Graham saying, OK, well, we're going to look into the FBI and the Clinton email investigation. By the way, that opens the door to everything. That's where it all began. The exoneration before investigation, because Hillary should have won a hundred million to zero, according to Peter Strzok at the time, and him saying that Trump is he's not going to fire Mueller. Anyway, I just want to get a quick update on what's going on in Congress, and we have with us Representative Warren Davidson. He's with Ohio's Eighth District Army vet. Went to the military academy at West Point, then went back to Ohio, helping with family manufacturing business. Got his MBA from uh, Notre Dame. Uh, thank you, sir, for being with us. Appreciate it. And uh, how you liking things in D.C.? Well, it's an honor to be here, uh, Sean. It's an honor to be on your show. And uh, I certainly would like it like it more if uh, we were going to be staying on offense last year. But, you know, hey, you got to play offense to stay on offense. Yeah, well, you do. So what do you see happening with the Democrats? It seems like they don't have the votes. Now, there was one interesting little tidbit that the president gave out, and that was, well, maybe, you know, she's... You know, she should she's worked hard. She shouldn't not she shouldn't lose the speakership. And maybe we'll have to get a couple of Republican votes for her. Is that going to happen? Well, you know, if Maxine was up, she might be a tough, uh, tough uh, speaker for Republicans to say no to. But, you know, we'll, we'll let them fight amongst themselves as to who's going to lead their. If the president called you and said, Warren, I need your help. Nancy Pelosi for speaker. What do you say? Well, I, I, I think we get the, the way that he's, uh, he's baiting the Democrats into making bad decisions for their party. And, you know, the reality is Tim Ryan from Ohio knows that Democrats aren't winning Ohio 
with Nancy Pelosi as Speaker. Uh, Connor Lamb from Western Pennsylvania knows Democrats aren't going to win Western PA with Nancy Pelosi as Speaker. And so while they have control of the House, if they have any hope of it, they're going to have to turn away from this uh, far left, uh, outside of historical Democratic Party uh, uh, path that the, they've been on, uh, that Barack Obama set them on, and turn back to the party that John F. Kennedy led. And uh, Americans, some of our seniors, think of the Democratic Party, but the reality is the younger part of the party is way left of the historic Democratic Party. Well, let me ask you this, and I know your fellow Republican went up against Kevin McCarthy, but uh, I'm now hearing that, in fact, Jim Jordan might actually become or being floated for the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Um, That would be interesting, or the minority leader there. Um, House Republicans introducing a border wall bill that can be passed through reconciliation. Um, now, Kevin McCarthy's proposing that. Can that happen? Well, I hope uh, the, the stronger version of that comes through. We got 193 votes for uh, the Goodlatte bill, and I think we could take that base piece and make it stronger. I, I looked through the language that, Ke- that uh, Leader McCarthy proposed, and uh, the good news is he's willing to try to do something. Because I, I was fearing that we were just going to go on out of here uh, quietly into the good night. And, of course, we're not supposed to do that. We're, we've, we're, we're on offense for at least four more weeks, and we ought to play as much offense as we can. And uh, one of the things that still is yet to be resolved is funding the government for the, the full year, uh, which is one of the key duties of Congress. And we haven't secured the border all the way. And, and uh, my fear is that we just build a wall that we don't deal with the sanctuary policies and some of the other things that you could build a wall as high as the stratosphere and as thick as half the state of Texas. If you don't deal with the sanctuaries on this side of it, uh, there's still a big gap between legal and illegal immigration, uh, you're going to have a black market. So if there's a big gap between supply and demand, uh, it's going to be filled. Uh, Anyone with the economics uh, mindset will see it. And so we've got to deal with those sanctuary policies, too. The president laid out four principles, and I hope he fights fights to the mat for it. All right. Well, best of luck to you. And the Republicans have a lot of work to do from my perspective from now until the end of this Congress, and uh, they need to get it done. If we can use the reconciliation process to get the other 23 billion the president wants for the wall, uh, I think it would be a good idea and a, you know, go out on a high note in that sense and then be ready. You probably have to work harder as the Democrats have no agenda except to hate Trump investigate, 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 and do nothing for the American people. So it shouldn't be hard to counter that. Oh, you're uh, spot on. Absolutely. All right. Appreciate it. 800 941 Sean, toll-free telephone number if you want to be a part of the program. Uh, we say hi to Michelle is in Connecticut. Michelle, hi. How are you? Glad you called, and uh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for highlighting the real cost of illegal immigration, and you do it so brilliantly. I, I saw you do it the other night. Um My question, how many are we going to accept, and what do they do? Where do they go if we don't accept them? Do they just turn around and walk back? And I wanted to know if anybody really understands how many diseases these people are bringing here. There's polio, TB. Uh, Listen, I'm not worried about the diseases. Here's the problem. Mexico, you know, they had the ability to offer asylum and ask asylum there. They didn't want it. They want it here. And even Mexico offered some, you know, southern Mexican uh, Mexico work permits for people. They didn't want that either. Mexico, though, still refuses to stop the caravan in its tracks. Make sure everybody turns around. What the fear is, is, all right, we've had the first 80 yesterday. In the next two days, we're going to have a we expect another 900 or a thousand because they've been able to get some type of transportation. This means it's going to be ongoing. Here's my great fear. What if God forbid what they did at the Southern border of Mexico, they do here. I don't want anybody in that caravan getting hurt. And based on what top ranking officials of Mexico have said, and what our own department of Homeland security have said is that a lot of unsavory characters, some 300 of them have mixed in with the caravan of people that probably just want to have a better life. All right, 800-941-SEAN is our number. You want to be a part of the program. Jane is in Scottsdale in Arizona. Jane, hi, how are you? Glad you called. Well, I'm fine, Sean. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I was chortling to myself about uh, Avenatti and how he is such a terrible victim at at the hands of this woman because he's wrongfully accused and he's never been a womanizer and he's just innocent victim and how odd that this is the same man that was after Brett Kavanaugh. He's guilty until he's proven innocent. 
I love the hand of God. <laughs> Well, look, I mean, I, I'm look, I'm sure there are people, and thank you for the call, that are taking glee in what's happening. Now. I don't take any glee in this. I, I, I just don't. Um, I just, you know, if something horrible like this happened, uh, I hope justice is served. If it didn't happen, I hope that justice is served. I don't think anybody should rush the judgment in these cases. I've, look, I've given you all the high-profile cases that have impacted my life. Everything from Richard Jewell, the so-called Olympic bomber that he wasn't. You know, we saw Duke lacrosse. We saw UVA. We saw Cambridge police. We saw Trayvon and Zimmerman. We saw Ferguson, Missouri, uh, Baltimore, Freddie Gray. Everybody, everybody thinks they know. They all want to, you got to wait. You got to watch. You got to look at it and you got to see. I, I mean, I remember that Duke lacrosse, I actually took the time in a lot of these ca cases to actually not only talk to, but then go see. I went down to Florida, interviewed George Zimmerman. I interviewed the families. I went to their home in the Duke lacrosse case. And I spoke to some of the families, some of the kids, and got their side of the story. I tried to reach out to the other side to get their side of things. So you just got to, everybody's got to take at least a deep breath here. But it is the irony is is right there. You're right. I don't wish anybody ill in life. I it's not who I am, who I ever want to be. But I do believe in justice. We should have equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws. And I just maybe maybe today he wishes it would be in, the best question. I think anyone could ever ask Avenatti. Hey, um, do you regret what you did now? Rushing to judgment. Because your client changed her story and so-called witnesses didn't exist. One didn't even know your client. And he was out there with a certainty this happened. And they were what they were claiming, it didn't make any sense that almost on a weekly uh, basis, weekend basis, that, you know, boys were drugging girls, getting them wasted, lining up in halls and taking their turns to gang rape drug girls, teenage girls, and that it never got out, but it happened that often. It was a it was a lie on a spectacular level. Didn't make sense that nobody told their mom, their dad, or nobody said what was going on, or the police, or a teacher, or somebody. When you're dealing with kids, usually if, if they do one little thing wrong, it's around the school in about 30 seconds. Look, this is it, and I've got to tell you about your chance to win the biggest, best trip of your life from our friends at the USCCA, and that they're giving you a chance to win $10,000 for the ultimate gun getaway. Friday is your last chance. You won't hear about it again, and we're about to pick the lucky winner who's going to take home $10,000 $10, and make their dream vacation a reality. It's the first time they've ever done anything like this. may never happen again. So don't miss a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. Just text the word guns. Remember, they defend and protect our Second Amendment rights. They teach responsible gun ownership at the USCCA. They have great stuff on their website. Don't forget to go take a look at it. Just text the word guns to the number 87222. Right now, you'll lock in your free chance to win a $10,000 ultimate gun getaway. Now, think of everything you can do with an extra ten grand in your pocket. You know, maybe a safari or tactical training academies, VIP shooting experiences. This is it. You can stop dreaming, start doing. Text the word guns to 87222. 87222, the word guns. One more time, the word guns to 87222. Do it now while you're thinking about it. There are so many reasons to be a grateful nation. And in large part, we have our military and our veterans to thank for our liberties and freedom. National Wreaths Across America Day is Saturday, December 15th. You can join in the mission to remember our fallen heroes, honor those who currently serve and their families, and teach younger generations the value of freedom. A $15 donation to Wreaths Across America sponsors a fresh handmade balsam wreath from Maine with a single red bow. The veterans' wreaths have become a gift of America's respect. The circular wreath with 10 balsam bouquets is a catalyst for unity, healing, and an expression of gratitude. What started with America's most hollowed ground at Arlington National Cemetery has grown to ceremonies at close to 1,500 other participating locations across the country and overseas. Sponsor a Veterans Wreath today and show your appreciation. Visit www.wreathsacrossamerica.org 
That's www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. Uh, all right, back to our phones. Uh, Don Lake Ronkonkoma. Big Don, welcome aboard. How are you, sir? It's been a while. Hey, Sean, it has been a while. I just want to congratulate you on your high popularity ratings. And those are ratings done by real viewership, not absentee ballots. <laughs> yeah, I know. The real, the, they actually matter a little more. I kind of, I will, I will concede the point. Well said. You have an incredible cruise on TV and radio, but you already do. know that. Listen, I don't know. They have, there's not much time, but it uh, looks like Karma has a new name, and it's Michael Avenatti. And I have to agree with you. He does deserve uh, to get a fair, uh, fair shake. But I'll tell you, when I heard that news about him being arrested, it was it made me so aggravated what he put that poor Kavanaugh family through. Yeah, and in, in retrospect, if you listen to what he said. And you listen to what Kavanaugh said, he, it, you know, it's two identical. very passionate denials. Right. And if somebody's denying it, OK, we stand on that. Then you look at the facts. We don't have to go back 40 years. Eventually, we will find out in all likelihood who the anonymous woman happens to be and whether or not there are injuries as have been reported by some in the press. We'll find all we'll find that truth out. But yeah, in the I, meantime, it we, is an abject lesson. For everybody, uh, you know, I will tell you that the Duke lacrosse case was probably the worst. You had all of these professors at Duke full page ads they took out. They okay. thought those athletes, you know, we're going to put them in their place. These cocky jocks that think their blank doesn't stink. They wanted a uh, camera time, Sean, and uh, they got it. But they were uh, they sh- looked like morons. A lot of, uh, but but the problem is lives get ruined. I, I look. Oh, yeah. I actually think there's a reason that one of the big commandments is "Thou shalt not bear false witness." Yeah, I really do because it destroys you. It can it destroy does. people. Right, you know, Clarence Thomas. Here it is. What twenty five years later? I, what was it? Ninety? I forget the year. Eighteen. Twenty five years 18, later. Yeah. And we're still talking about what happened Clarence. to him and when he had to defend himself. Yep. You know, Robert Bork went to his grave. Ted Kennedy slandered and smeared and besmirched and lied through his teeth. Mr. Chappaquiddick himself. Yeah. You know. All right. Thanks. Uh, always good to hear from you. Don, Lake Rock Honkama. Appreciate it. 800 941 Sean. Toll free telephone number. You want to be a part of the program. All right. News Roundup Information Overload Hour. I, I just cannot get over. There is a California Senator Kamala Harris. Asking the acting ICE director if he's aware of the perception that ICE is the KKK. To get reaction, we have Jessica Vaughn, director of policy studies for the Center for Immigration Studies. Uh, Jonathan Gillum, former FBI agent, federal air marshal, author of Sheep No More. Brandon Judd is the president of the National Border Patrol Council, 20-year active Border Patrol veteran. Um, and, uh, thank you all for being with us. Let me, let me start with you, if I might, Brandon, and ask you, I, I've been down to the border about 12, 13 times. I don't know the exact amount from the Rio Grande all the way to San Diego, many, many places in between what I've witnessed myself. I've witnessed have on camera, have video of a gang member being arrested. Uh, I have video of drug warehouses that are massive Florida sealed Florida ceiling drugs that were literally being brought into this country and targeting, I would argue, our children in in ways that are unimaginable of so many of them. And I've seen tunnels dug and I've seen all sorts of things. Helicopter, boats, all-terrain vehicles, horseback, walking, done it all. My question to you is, how do you react to what she said? It's upsetting. The mainstream media would have you believe that all of these people that are crossing the border illegally are just poor, innocent individuals looking for a better life. And while some of that is true, I can personally tell you, and like what you just illustrated right there, there is an awful lot of of very bad actors that are crossing the border illegally. Just a couple months ago, um, we we arrested an individual that had his eight-year-old daughter that had a conviction in the United States for rape. And he was bringing his eight-year-old daughter uh, across the border. Of course we had to separate those two individuals. These are the types of things that Border Patrol agents face all the time. And to have to listen to this rhetoric about how we're bad people, how we're Nazis, it's absolutely ridiculous. We have had agents that have lost their lives going into the Colorado River to try to save 
um, illegal aliens. We do it compassionately, compassionately. We do it well. And it, it, you cannot demonize us like that. I sat through, Jonathan Gillum, a security briefing. I've played it many times. I won't take the time now. Maybe I'll show it again on TV tonight. Where in the course of a seven-year period, I was with Governor Rick Perry. This was the this was the very hearing that Barack Obama was invited to, and the Democrats had a very different point of view on immigration during the Obama years, and it's totally shifted and changed to open borders, sanctuary cities, uh, now wanting to eliminate ICE. But I sat there, 642,000 crimes committed against Texans alone, some not severe, some very severe, including murder. So uh, those are their statistics. That's the numbers they had. Nobody's ever challenged those numbers because they're right. This is coming straight from law enforcement. I sat in the briefing with the governor and those that are on the ground. That's a lot of crime coming into the country. Now, we've been warned by the Department of Homeland Security that there are amongst this caravan, and and let's say 99% just want a better life for themselves, their families, their kids, and we're the land of opportunity to them. I get it. But among them are some 300 criminals and dangerous individuals that have mixed in with this caravan. Yeah, you know, Sean, when when I was in the SEAL teams, uh, I worked in and out of Central South America. I was with SEAL Team 4 and that's what we did before 9-11 and the shift to the war on terror. And uh, we dealt a lot in Honduras, um, down in Colombia, uh, Mexico, uh, all kinds of places down there where the governments had failed. And all the money that we give to them goes to the governments and, and goes to the politicians and goes to the, the already wealthy. Th- this has been uh, long uh, debated, and this thing has been coming uh, for a long time where people would – uh, start moving towards the border. The the thing, and I know that Brandon is going to be shaking his head when I say this, the thing about this is that it can be controlled if realistic, effective policies are allowed to be put in place. But from all the way back when I was down there in, in Central South America looking at this, asking myself, why is this allowed that to happen? Why is this being allowed to build up? We, we fund these governments that don't do anything to, to make their countries better, and we don't do anything to secure our own borders. Put, just putting up a wall would stop the majority of this stuff from ever happening. The war on drugs, the war on terror, the immigration issue, it would all come to a quick halt. Now, they would always try to find different ways to get over the wall or under the wall. But those are new challenges that we could face right now. And for the, my entire life and my career in law enforcement and in military, nobody's done anything. And, and every time well, they try it. You get rhetoric like you just heard earlier when you started the show. I, well, it's just you, you well, there's man. It, the funny thing is, and um, I'll play this after I talk to Jessica. Those that have th- those Democrats sound like Trump just during the Obama years. But, Jessica, you stu- this is what your group does. You study this day in and day out. What is the impact to the American people in, in any regard you you have discovered? Well, there are a, a lot of different impacts. The first is on taxpayers because um, we end up providing funds for education, uh, public health, there are public safety costs, uh, there are uh, public assistance programs that end up going to illegal aliens and to the, the families that they start when we allow them to get away with living here. There are also lost job opportunities for Americans who would be doing the work that employers uh, are bypassing them in order to hire I- cheaper illegal aliens. And there's the national security and public safety risk that uh, we don't know who these people are coming in. And right now our border agencies are absolutely overwhelmed with the number of people coming. There were 650 people caught in just the couple, last couple days in the Yuma sector. And they don't have the ability to screen all these people to find out if they're coming to be a busboy or if they're coming to join up with MS-13 or some other more nefarious purpose. This is a huge problem, and it's, it's an affront to Americans, but it's also an affront to the millions of legal immigrants who are being sponsored by family members uh, who are waiting in line. And, and they are the ones that Senator Harris and others are kind of trying to whip up against immigration enforcement. And uh, even though it is the open borders advocates who are making people fear 
enforcement by telling these tales and, and uh, equating immigration enforcement with the KKK and Nazis and so on, they're the ones stoking fear. But the truth is that immigrants don't want to live in communities where they're going to be preyed on by MS-13, which has gotten in here because of catch-and-release policies. Mm-hmm. Or, um, well, let, you me, know, let me just, uh, in light of everything Kamala Harris has said, let, let's play Democrats because they sound an awful lot, lot like Trump. And by the way, this was not long ago. This, these cuts, these statements were made during the Obama years. I voted uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a, uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. But those who enter our country legally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law. And because we live in an age where terrorists are challenging our borders, we cannot allow people to pour into the U.S. undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. I think that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it, Brandon Judd? You're a bad guy for finding those. those you know, I am a horrible person for actually playing them in their own <laughs> words. I, you know what? You're right. I should, I'm going straight to hell. No doubt about it. You, you are. You are. It, it's crazy. It's insane to think that it was politically expedient a couple of years ago, but all of a sudden it's not anymore. And that border security is, is a four letter word. This is, this is, it's crazy to think of this. And it's crazy that we demonize our good law enforcement officers and agents that all they want to do is protect citizens of the United States. And, and frankly, they just want to protect the people. Not, that are not only do they do that, they, they sacrifice a lot. They, they probably all would make more money in the private sector. It's a dangerous job. Some of these guys, as you pointed out, get killed. You know, I, I've, I've interviewed too many angel families here on this program on Hannity, the TV show, that have lost their, their sons and daughters. You want to talk about separation? That's permanent separation, Jonathan that they'll never see their kids again. And in large, in many cases, immigrants that had already committed crimes that were protected by, quote, sanctuary city status that allowed them to stay in the country to commit more crimes and even worse crimes in some cases. Yeah, and you know, the, the statistics, you can't trust statistics that the government puts out. You can't trust politicians. We all know that. Um, and and a, a fine statistic of this is when, you know, you say, this many people have been killed by illegal aliens. Well, one is the only statistic we really need to know is that one person or one Border Patrol agent were, were killed because these policies are not effective. And I'll, I'll give everybody a, a good, quick example. You know, we hear every year when the FBI comes down, they testify about terrorism investigations. They say we have 1,000 terrorism investigations at any given time. Out of all those investigations, only a handful are actually terrorist related once they're vetted out but that statistic is never told they say yep. 300 out of 7,000 are bad people we have no true way of knowing that because none of them are, are vetted at all that's the scary part all right quick break right back we'll continue uh more on the influx the caravan we're expecting in the next two days another thousand migrants to arrive at the border and uh, they're all going to cl- claim asylum that apparently they've all been coached to do so and what's going to happen with them from there. We'll continue on the other side of this. 800 941 Sean is our toll-free number. We'll also get your calls in, final half hour. A lot more on Avenatti versus Kavanaugh. And, of course, watching Florida very, very closely. As And does the White House need anybody in the press room? Why do they need a White House press room? Maybe they can wait across the street. And if the president or Sarah Sanders wants to talk to them, they can wait there. We'll talk about that and more straight ahead. There are so many reasons to be a grateful nation, and in large part, we have our military and our veterans to thank for our liberties and freedom. National Wreath Across America Day is Saturday, December 15th. You can join in the mission to remember our fallen heroes, honor those who currently serve and their families, and teach younger generations the value of freedom. A $15 donation to Wreaths Across America sponsors a fresh handmade balsam wreath from Maine with a single red bow. The veterans' wreaths have become a gift of America's respect. The circular wreath with 10 balsam bouquets is a catalyst for unity, healing, and an expression of gratitude. 
What started with America's most hallowed ground at Arlington National Cemetery has grown to ceremonies at close to 1,500 other participating locations across the country and overseas. Sponsor a Veterans Wreath today and show your appreciation. Visit www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. That's www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. And as we continue discussing another, what, 1,000 now expected to arrive at the border, uh, members of the caravan, some that have been able to split off a little bit, it rides up here. We continue with Jessica Vaughn, Director of uh, Policy Studies, Center for Immigration, Jonathan Gillum, Brandon Judd, uh, Brandon, of course, President of the National Border Patrol Council, and Jonathan, former FBI uh, Federal Marshal. So we're expecting all these other people that are going to be coming, and if they go to a port of entry, they're allowed to apply for asylum. Jessica, what does that mean? Does that ultimately guarantee that however many thousands estimates from seven to 15,000 people get asylum? It could mean that. Uh, it depends on uh, how uh, the Department of Homeland Security is going to view these cases in light of the fact that um, they've come a long way through Mexico and had the opportunity to apply for asylum there. What happens is, is that people have figured out that if you make it to U.S. soil and say that you have a fear of return, that there's about a 90% chance that you're going to be allowed into the United States. But my understanding has always been that they have to apply for asylum in the first country they arrive in. That would be Mexico in this case. That's generally understood um, to be what's expected of people seeking safe haven. Um, And I think that, well, uh, Jeff Sessions uh, gave some guidance to asylum officers that they should consider that when getting uh, when reviewing these claims for asylum. But look, that what they want, they don't really want asylum. They want to get into the United States. Half the people that we let in who claim to fear of return will not even fill out the asylum application form. Mm-hmm. Half of them will not show up at their court hearing. And if they do, it turns out that only about 10% of them will be found qualified for asylum, but they just abscond from their proceedings and they don't go home when removed by a judge. The idea is to get here, get into the country, and they, they know that employers can get away with hiring them, and they'll be able to live here almost indefinitely at joining the larger illegal population. And as long as right. we have am- these policies, the biggest wall... Uh, is not going to stop these caravans. I wish I can go further. We, uh, we're we just out of time. Thank you both for being with us. We appreciate it, Jessica. Thank you. Jonathan, thank you. Brandon, all the best to you. It's unbelievable that we even have to discuss what Kamala Harris had to say. Uh, all right, when we come back, we're going to get to your phone calls. Uh, but if you happen to be somebody that is like Linda, Linda, would you say, uh, is this in the top 10 mistakes you made in your life when you bought? Oh, when you yeah. W- You're right. So you were 20 years. <laughs> That's my favorite story. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it in the top five mistakes you've made in your life? Oh, uh, yeah. Is it in the top three? I would say it's like number two. Number, what's number one? I don't even want to. I can't say that for, on air. Working for me, I guess. Uh, all right. So oh, she goes I to Mexico. say that. Don't say that. She goes to Mexico and she's uh, having the vacation of her life. She's 20 years old. And somebody says, well, you can have this vacation every year. You can lock it in right now just to get buy a timeshare. And you sit, you talk, you get the timeshare, and however many years later, let's just say over a decade. um, Oh, it's like 38 years ago. It's a nightmare. (laughs) You're not that old. You, um, you, all of a sudden, you're paying every year for maintenance, right? Every year. Okay, and you never go back. I don't. Brian and Karen keep yelling at me because I'm holding up the process. Yeah, why? All right, so Brian and Karen, they run a family-owned business. It's called Lone Star Transfer. LoneStarTransfer.com is their website, okay? And if you're in this situation, you have a timeshare, you're paying all this money, all these fees every single year, and you don't go, and you want to get out of it, you want to do it expeditiously, uh, legally, you want to do it with people that know what they're doing. Well, that's Brian and Karen, LoneStarTransfer.com. And don't let another year go by paying all that money. It's killing your pocketbook. They do this every day. And A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. All you have to do is go to their website, LoneStarTransfer.com, or use your cell phone, call 250, keyword timeshare. Cell phone, 250, pound, I'm sorry, pound 250, Cell phone, pound 250, and keyword timeshare, and they'll get you out of it. It's that simple. Quick break. Right back. Your calls are next. (laughs) 
Exposing left-wing media bias. No stone left unturned. The Sean Hannity Show is back on the air. If the president was smart, if he wasn't so arrogant, he would see the writing on the wall and he would pull this nomination immediately. We're not talking about a mere um, accusation or allegation. And here's another important point. This isn't going to be adjudicated in one day or even two days. I have never struck a woman. I never will strike a woman. If you read further in the declaration are far more specific um, and uh, relating to Brett Kavanaugh's conduct uh, towards women in general, uh, including the attempts to uh, drug uh, women by placing uh, grain alcohol and or drugs in uh, basically the punch of these parties. Uh, that many of these women ended up gang raped, unfortunately. I mean, the details in this declaration are specific. Uh, they are shocking. Uh, but above all else, they are true. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process. But you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. This has destroyed my family and my good name. A good name built up through decades of very hard work and public service at the highest levels of the American government. Because she has firm, a firm recollection of specific conduct by Brett Kavanaugh and Mark Judge. And let me also say this. Brett Kavanaugh, in my opinion, has zero credibility. This man is an absolute liar. He's lied about big things, and he's li lied about small things. I've never sexually assaulted anyone. This guy has lied repeatedly throughout the process. Fox News, the Senate Judiciary Committee. I've never sexually assaulted anyone, not in high school, not ever. Uh, I've always treated women with dignity and respect. He is not a genuine person. He is lying repeatedly about drinking too much. I mean, let me get this straight. All of these women are liars. His friends from Yale Law School, they're liars. Well, they're the, only, they're the, only person that, the only person that's telling the truth, the only person that's telling the truth is Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, listen to the people who've known me best through my whole life. The women who've known me since high school, the 65 who overnight signed a letter from high school saying I always treated them with dignity and respect. Does he want America to believe that the only thing that he did until well into his college years was effectively uh, kiss or French kiss a woman? Is that what he wants America to believe? Well, because I, I don't believe, believe, it. It. believe it. I have been an advocate for women's rights my entire career, and I'm going to continue to be an advocate. I am not going to be intimidated from stopping what I am doing. This is a circus. The consequences will extend long past my nomination. The consequences will be with us for decades. I will not be intimidated into withdrawing from this process. You've tried hard. You've given it your all. No one can question your effort. But your coordinated and well-funded effort to destroy my good name and destroy my family will not drive me out. I am innocent of this charge. All right, 24 now till the uh, top of the hour, 800 941 Sean toll-free telephone number you want to be a part of the program. Well, obviously, this has to do with Michael Avenatti has been arrested, domestic violence arrest, if true. Um, even the ladies of the view say he deserves to be raked over the coals. I'm going to get to that side of it in a second. I want to just be clear, as I said earlier in the program today, I, 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 I ran into Michael once, never was that interested in, in how or why he was doing his story. That's fine. All the other media just fell in love with him and he was the, the next media star. It's not about him. It's there's something far more profound and much deeper in play here than him personally. So I'm, I almost want to take him out, although you can't take it out, him out of it because of what has happened here. Um, he seemed to be suggesting in what he said last night that, you know, it was a gross misunderstanding. I think that's important. He said he's never hit a woman. He would never, ever do anything like that. His whole life has been dedicated to protecting women. LAPD now telling sources, TMZ has reported that, they observed injuries on the face of the alleged victim in this case, and 
have now obtained protective orders that forbid Avenatti from going anywhere near uh, this person who is still anonymous. But um, and, you know, it's this isn't some what you've got here is serious allegations, but not from 40 years ago. This is the same week, same day. And if the quotes are true, she hit me first and all of that. If that turns out to be true, that is going to be, I think, uh, pretty devastating to anybody. But I want to take that out of it. The most absurd, obscene, outrageous. When you go back to the Kavanaugh hearings, allegations that were made were made by his client, Julie Swetnick. And that's where, you know, the girls almost on a regular weekend basis were were getting spiked punch that these high school boys were drugging them. And now the story changed, but then the boys would line up in the halls and they'd wait to take their turns and gang rape these girls. And again, it happened almost on a regular basis. Now, when the investigation began, well, Two of the people, one was dead. The other one said, I had no idea who Julie Swetnick is. And there was never any corroborating evidence. And on the other side of that, you have her story changed. She backed off a lot of her explosive allegations when she was finally interviewed. And at this point, Chuck Grassley has referred Michael Avenatti and Julie Swetnick for a criminal investigation to the Department of Justice. So this is not over by any stretch of the imagination. So what you have, and Alan Dershowitz, I remember said at the time, Avenatti may not have, may have an ethical obligation to withdraw the Swetnick affidavit, especially when she started contradicting her own self here. But the point is he went out in this case against Kavanaugh with a a ferocious intensity that, like the Democrats, abandoned core fundamental values. Every one of the allegations was there was never any corroboration. Again, we're talking about 40 years ago in most cases, 36 years ago, whatever it was. And they never were able to corroborate any of it. Many of the stories shifted or altered, changed, or no details were remembered at all. And people that were supposed to be an eyewitness, I remember in the case of Professor Ford said, no, it didn't happen. And the other people there said, I don't remember anything like this. And, you know, bit by bit. Now, in the meantime, this man's character is trashed. Character assassination at a level that no nobody should ever have to go to. My argument at the time was that we believe in due process, that it has served this country so well and the presumption of innocence that has served us so well. And I'll say I said it then and I'm going to say it now. And it Michael Avenatti deserves due process. The presumption of innocence, as he claimed in the press conference when he got out of, I guess he was being booked and charged in Los Angeles. He deserves it, but he didn't afford it to anybody else. He didn't afford it to Judge Kavanaugh. And in the case of Democrats in general, it was just a a crush, bludgeon, destroy, kill somebody's character any way, anyhow you need to do it. And there is a massive danger. If we go down this road for everybody, I don't know Michael Avenatti. I don't know. We don't even know who the woman is. We don't have the facts of the case, except that he's been charged and he proclaims his innocence. But the, but why it's so important is that this fundamental constitutional protection of ours goes to the heart of our legal system. And I I will adhere to that. You know, all my life I've been and I said this earlier. From the Richard Jewell case on, I learned such a lesson when the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, I'd love to see what that payoff was when I think they eventually got sued. Lynn Wood was the attorney, really good attorney down in the Atlanta area, and he worked, he took on Richard Jewell as a client, and oh, he fits the profile of a lone bomber because he lives with his mother. That was the whole case. And I said, this is absurd. On the air, had no idea Richard Jewell was listening to my show at the time. I was a local radio host in Atlanta. And then the next thing we know is he wasn't the guy. He was the hero. And everybody had gone with it. And they went insane with it. And he ended up being innocent. We have seen a rush to judgment constantly in the Obama years. It drove me nuts. Cambridge police acted stupidly. Or Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman. Or Ferguson, Missouri. Or Baltimore. 
or what Duke lacrosse was another example where there were a few of us by holding to those principles, we ended up being right. Withhold judgment, wait for the facts to come in. And I did in every one of those cases. The UVA case is another one. Any more you can think of, Linda? We've done it all the time. You know, no, I mean, maybe there's I a history of this. It's pretty scary stuff. It's it's scary stuff. And the thing is, I may not care for Michael Avenatti's politics, but he deserves what he didn't give Kavanaugh. And I think people really, you know, because it's him and because of how over the line he went, it's a, in one sense, I just think it's a very important moment for everybody to stand back because if it's you if it's someone you know if it's someone you love if it's someone you care about you are gonna want those those core principles working for you it's hard um all right let's get to our busy phones 800 941 sean if you want to be a part of the program let's go to uh linda uh andrews air force base what's up linda how are you Hi, thank you, Sean. I am pissed. I am so upset. They need to shut the border completely. Shut it down now. The president needs to shut it down. These people are dangerous. They are saying that they're waiting for all the caravan so they can come through all of them together, and they don't care how many millions uh, 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 soldiers are there. They want to damage them. They are saying all kind of stuff in Spanish, and the media is not reported in reporting this they need to shut the border completely none of them come in enough is enough this is disgraceful well look i want people to do it legally i have no problem i'm you know all the years that i worked in restaurants all the years that i worked i'll, I'll give you one example when i was uh in my teens there's a place in long island called eisenhower park at the time it was called salisbury on the green it's a different place it had five golf courses and it was like a wedding factory. It was unbelievable. I mean, they do five weddings some Friday nights, believe it or not. Five on uh, uh, Saturday, five and Saturday night, five Sunday, five Sunday night. Tonight, 10 bar. I made a fortune as a kid, at least I thought at the time. And they, there were plenty of people that worked in the restaurant at the time. I think it's a county-owned restaurant, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. And once or twice every year, in would come the immigration's customs people and all these guys that worked in the kitchen, for example, would they be racing out the back door onto the golf course and, you know, some would get caught and others would get away with it, get, get away and then come back to work. Um, when I worked with them, I saw good people, great people, actually, doing hard jobs. I don't know what their pay was, but I don't expect it was very high, wanting what we take for granted. I get it. I understand it. But it has to be done legally. That's that's what we're asking. Um, all right. Back to our phones. Uh, Donna is in Staten Island. Donna, how are you? The all new AM 710 WOR. What's going on? How are you, my friend? I'm good. What's happening? I find myself scratching my head because I'm kind of waiting for all those women in the Me Too movement and all of the, you know, all the left wing people to be screaming about Michael Avenatti. Should I not hold my breath lest I turn well, purple? Well, think about all the people that joined with Avenatti and said, well, I believe her. I believe her. I mean, I can do a montage. I believe this one. I believe that one. And right. uh, um, it just is a rush to judgment in that case for the worst possible reasons for pure political gain and nothing else. And, you know, imagine if you are the one of the daughters of Justice Kavanaugh now. Imagine that for a second. All your life, this will follow you. This will be with you. Names, character, reputations matter. And when you destroy somebody's, in this case, there's, there was no evidence to back up or corroborate any of this. None. The witnesses' names that were mentioned said, no, it didn't happen. And it was, um, it's a shame what they did here. But it's not the first time. This is what borking is. This is what they did to Justice Thomas this has happened far too often to t far too many good people. You know, maybe people look, if I was a total hypocrite, I'd say, well, maybe I believe whoever this anonymous woman is. I, I don't I don't know anything about it. I just know he deserves what Kavanaugh deserved. He deserves presumption of innocence due process. And that's my point. Um, all right. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Hey, listen, I will tell you that my pillow changed my life. It just works. I love it. I can't be without it. I fall asleep faster. I, I stay asleep longer. 
Now, my pillow has outdone themselves. They have taken what they do for your head and your neck and sleeping, and they've added to your entire sleep experience by creating the my pillow mattress topper. You put it on top of your mattress, and it is like you are sleeping on a cloud. It's my pillow for your whole body. It's amazing. You get my pillow foam for support that you need. It has transitional foam to help uh, relieve pressure points. It's ultra soft, patented temperature, regulating cover, and it has a 10 year warranty and a cover that's washable, dryable, made in the U.S., backed by Mike's 60 day unconditional money back guarantee. In other words, my pillow for the whole body, all the support and the better sleep you want and deserve. Right now, if you go to MyPillow.com or call 800-919-6090, get the MyPillow mattress topper, mentioning my name, Hannity, you save 30% and you get two standard MyPillows absolutely free. That's MyPillow.com, promo code Hannity. You will love sleeping on a cloud like I do. Sean Hannity. That's going to wrap things up for today. Hannity tonight, 9 Eastern, Fox News Channel. Obviously, the latest on the caravan, uh, the caravan now expecting, what, another 1,000 people. Uh, so we'll get to that. Uh, also, uh, the latest on Avenatti, the hypocrisy. Well, now people on the left, will they start saying due process, presumption of innocence? That might be a, a good change of pace on a, for a lot of different reasons. Can the president say no press? All right, that's 9 Eastern, Hannity, Fox News. We'll see you tonight at 9, back here tomorrow. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.